Hey everyone, it's Kelly here for Soy and Shay and thank you so much for joining me. Now if you caught this week's midweek video, you would have seen that I made some olives and some really long stick things to go inside of this soap. And in that video, I mentioned that I was really excited about making the soap this weekend. Now at the start of this year, I received a package and it came to me from Mubu Meltzer Moore, a wonderful young lady from South Australia who runs her own business while still juggling school as well. And she makes some of the most amazing products. Now I opened up this box and it was a belated birthday present. She follows along with me on Instagram and if you do too, you'll probably know that I have a passion and a love for all things gin. And she sent to me a bottle of Nature's Garden Gin Martini and she said she was looking forward to seeing what I do with this fragrance oil. So I knew I had to make something really special. When I smelt this, it just smelt like a really, really nice gin. In fact, to me, this particular um, fragrance oil reminds me of my favourite gin, which is Gin Mare. It has got notes of club soda, citrus, rosemary, balsam fir, crushed ginger, and crisp cedar. And the Gin Mare actually does have rosemary through it. It's a Mediterranean gin. So I am really looking forward to using this fragrance oil. I have taken quite a number of steps to make sure that the design that I'm doing today hopefully all comes together and everything plays nice. So let's go and see if we can get this gin martini to play nice today. Right, so to create this gin martini soap, I actually want to create the soap bar so it actually looks like a martini glass with some olives in it. So fingers crossed this is all going to work. All of the information that I have read on the Nature's Garden website says that this performs really, really well. So I've got my fingers crossed, but just in case, I've actually um, separated my oils and lye water out so that I can do each part of my layers separately. So the first thing I'm going to do is the base of this soap, and then we're going to do a little bit of sculpting so I can put a stem of a glass into it. So what I've got in here are my oils, and I'm going to gently pour my lye water into it and give it a mix until we come to emulsion and then I'm going to separate it out for some colours. So the first colour I'm going to add in is some Mysterious Mica. Now as I said, I'm going to base this off of the Gin Mare Martini. So for around the base of my stem glass, I'm going to do a blue base. And that is because the Gin Mare bottle is this really pale blue. It's got some white in it. So in my little jug over here, I'm going to put in just a tiny amount of titanium dioxide. And then the Gin Mare bottle also comes with a silver lid. So I am also going to do a drop swirl of some silver mica. So I'll get these micas mixed in and then I will add my fragrance in and then we'll pop it into our mold. We're going to add in just, just a touch of Cool Vista just to really bring that blue up a little bit more because that is a little bit um, grayer than what I was actually hoping to get. So we'll mix some of that in and then we'll get that fragrance in. Now I'm just going to leave that to set up and then we'll come back and we'll start scooping out the middle. Alright, so we're going to see if we can start sculpting this. What I have here is a piece of plastic. You often see me working on the red 
cutting mat that I've got. They're just these plastic mats. They're really cheap to buy. So I decided to actually cut up one of those to be my template. And what I did is I took my soap design and I drew it out to scale. And then I cut out the shape of the glass that I want. So this is the stem that I actually want to cut out from the bottom. And I want a gentle slope because I'm using a bowl martini sort of look in my mind. What I'm going to do is just pop my little template down the end here and I'm just going to start pushing the soap along and it is going to start pushing up as I get more push up here I am going to start scooping it out and popping it into this mold here I think I'm maybe going just a little bit too deep let's come back out there I think that's looking good so I'm just gonna keep pushing that along I'm going to grab my spoon here and I'm just going to start scooping some of that off. Definitely not going to waste it because it is smelling amazing. I'm just going to make up some extra little soaps here um, which will go into orders as giveaways or they may even go up for sale as well. They just won't have all the pretty um, other bits that are going to go on here. Alright, so we've got that. I'm going to keep going along. So I'll put my template back in and keep pushing. I'm pushing. So you need your soap to be firm enough that it doesn't all collapse back in into that gap. Um, but you also don't want it so firm that you actually can't manipulate the soap as well. That's another one in there. Just scoop a bit more of that off the top. And then we'll finish off scooping this out. I'm really happy with how that is looking. I have got quite a few other soaps on the side here. It is a really nice masculine smell as well. So I will probably actually end up renaming that and putting it into my men's sort of soap area or my men's range of things. The next bit I'm going to do is do the gray bit which I want to go into this little gap in here. So I have measured off some of that oil mix into a separate jug. I've already put my fragrance oil in here and I've already put my colorant as well because this behaved so well. I have got some of the Nimbus and some of the Blizzard Mica in this jug. I then have my um, lye water solution here. I'm going to pour that into this jug and then I'm going to mix it up and then very carefully pour it into this channel here. So because I want this to look like the edge of the glass, just in my little tea strainer here, I have put in some of the Blizzard Mica and some Nimbus Mica and I'm just going to do a bit of a mica dust or mica line across here. The Blizzard Mica is a nice thick mica so we, it should show up really, really well and that grey will just give it that sort of glassy look. I'm really happy with how that is coming together so now it's time to mix up the oils and the lye to fill in the top of this soap. Alright, so for the top of this soap I'm going to do a white base and I'm also going to drop a little bit of yellow through it as well. This is to represent the sort of lemony sort of smells that you get out of gin and that sort of um, that tonic smell that you get as well. In my base here, I am going to use some of this Blizzard Mica because with this Mica, that sparkle that's in it really comes through in a finished soap. And I'm also going to put in a little bit of titanium dioxide as well. And so again, what I'm going to do is do an in the pot swirl with this one. So I'm just going to pour my yellow straight into my white batter here. And then I'm going to get to pouring and adding in our embeds. Okay, so we've got our soap here. I am going to just pour a very thin layer of this one in first, just like so. 
And then one of the embeds that we made in the Wednesday soap were these long pieces of soap dough. And I am really hoping that these will look a little bit like olives because usually when you get a gin martini you get some olives in the bottom of your jar or in your bottom of your glass so I am really really hoping whoop, when these cut we'll end up with some olives now some of my canes have actually started to break but that is all okay I'm going to put one in up there pushing them in a little bit hopefully I'm not pushing them too far down into the blue I am going to just pour a little bit more of my soap on here it is great that this one is behaving so well but there are times when you kind of really do need your soap to set up a little bit quicker and this is one of them I am also going to just place another one kind of on the top of these so as I said some of these have broken up just a little bit I actually think that should be scooted down the end there and that piece is going to go in the middle and that is not on a cut line so we should end up with a whole olive there I'm going to finish pouring this in and then I'm going to decorate the top Right, so I've left this sit here for about five minutes just so that the top of this firms up really well. I'll just push my mould back into place there. So what I'm now going to do, I have my tray of embeds here and we have these olives which we made in the midweek video and I also made myself some little melt and pour soap curls which was to represent some lemon rind to go on the top of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm pretty sure... And I'm probably going to get this wrong. I'm pretty sure this is the side that have got all the olives sitting on them. So I'm just going to take one of my little olives here and I'm just going to rest them on the side of the soap here. And then as we get our olives on, whoop, don't want them to sink. That's it. I am also going to pop on a piece of that lemon twirl just on the other side of the soap here. Okay, so as I mentioned, gin is one of my favourite drinks and it happens to be the favourite drink of most of the women in my family, whether that be on my mum's side or my dad's side, it doesn't really matter. All the women in our family really like to drink gin and I, I will admit I am not a Gordon's girl. Um, I, I'm, I'm just not a fan of Gordon's gin. Um, I tend to have this horrible habit if I decide that I like something. I usually like top shelf stuff. So of course I fell in love with all the top shelf sort of gins. Um, I do, my first gin that I ever really tried was Bombay Sapphire and I really, really like that and I still go back to that as my basic gin. And then my mum introduced me to Hendrix and I fell in love with that one and then slowly over time I've just been gathering lots of bottles of gin and I think in my cabinet at the moment I probably have about eight different types of gin but I don't drink it that often. I like to collect them and I like to have a good smell of them and I maybe have a gin and tonic um, once or twice a week on these really hot summer days. It's just something that I really enjoy doing in the afternoon after working. It is one of those drinks that not everybody likes gin and tonic. Are you a gin drinker or do you just think the stuff is absolutely horrid like my husband who wouldn't touch it at all? So I know my gin cupboard's nice and safe from him. Let me know in the comments down below if you are a fan of gin. And if you are, let me know some of the gins that you really like to um, like to drink. As I mentioned, the Gin Mare, that is my all-time favourite gin. It is a Mediterranean one and has notes of olive and um, rosemary in it. I am also a bit of a fan of the Tanqueray Sevilla gin, which really goes nicely in a Negroni. And um, I have tried the Ink Gin, which is an Australian blue gin, which turns into a pink colour when you add the tonic water into it. I know there are a few colour changing gins out there. Uh, so let me know of any of the other gins that you know of that 
I should actually go ahead and have a try of. So I'm going to keep getting my lemon pieces in here. Okay, so we've got all our pieces in there. I did originally do enough olives to be able to put two on each bar, but I think just one is enough. And that means I have enough of these left over Plus I have enough of the gin martini fragrance left over to be able to make another bar of these which is really exciting because I'm very very pleased with how this is coming up. What I am going to do with this soap is just going to give it a quick spritz with a little bit of rubbing alcohol just to try and combat any soda ash that may occur. And now I'm going to bring you down for a quick look of gin martini. So here is gin martini up close with all those little olives and lemon twists on the top. It is smelling absolutely amazing and it is going to be a long wait until I can cut this one tomorrow. So we'll see what we've got on the inside and hopefully we get something that resembles a gin martini glass. I am back to cut the gin martini and I am so looking forward to getting this one cut open. I do have some soft spots at the end of this um, loaf here and I think that is where some of the mica that I dropped into it out of the bucket has actually pooled and it's made it go soft. So I'm going to keep this end bar for myself but I'm looking forward to getting this one cut open to see if I was able to get that whole gin martini glass look. So let's make sure this is lined up so I don't cut any of the olives or if I do it's going to be minimal cutting. Just need to shuffle it along just a little bit there. That's it and down and through we go and fingers crossed this has come up the way I am hoping. It is smelling beautiful. I really really like the smell of it. It's quite a green smell. Um, with all those furs through it. Okay, so here's the big question. Did it actually work? Oh wow, look at that. We have actually got that kind of look of a gin martini glass with the olives floating around in there. The olives have moved a little bit. This one has fallen right down into the base of the stem. So maybe our glass has a little divot in the bottom where it is sitting. But you can see we've got that mica line running along the edge of that yellow and the blue. Um, just to show where the edge of the glass is. And we've got each piece has got their little olive and lemon twist as well. It is smelling so so good in the um, in the white and in the silver I did put some of the blizzard mica and the camera may be picking some of that up you can see all the sparkles that come off that mica it really is such a gorgeous mica to use we'll grab the next one and see if we still have that pattern throughout and we do this other olive has moved a bit as well but that's okay um, oh we've got lots of rain oh dear Anyway, <laughs> so I'm really, really pleased with how this one has come together. Considering it was my first time at trying to inlay things into the soap, I do need a little bit of practice with that, but I'm pretty happy with how that has come up. In each of those olives, you can see the little bits of red pimento in there. I would like to say a huge thank you to Boo for sending me this fragrance oil. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with it. There is enough left in the bottle that I can do another loaf of this when this one sells through and I hope that by now you have actually received your bar of soap as well Boo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I This has been an absolute honour to make this soap and I hope you like what I've created with it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me make gin martini as much as I have enjoyed actually making this one. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you do have any questions, I will certainly get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And don't forget to leave me some suggestions on some gins that I might want to try. And if you haven't already and if you're new around here, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign and it will let you know when I bring the next soapy video out. So thank you again everyone for watching and until the next video have a great one. Bye!